Today's video is inspired by a question asked by a viewer on the comment section of a previous video on the channel who wanted to create a template of sorts that would expand out but automatically code fold away parts that are uninteresting to be able to focus in on the task at hand. This is easy to do in Sublime Text with a little bit of advanced preparation and we did get this user's question answered but I thought this would be a great opportunity for a video here on the channel because it does show that uh, you can take existing functionalities in Sublime that you're already familiar with and combine them in ways that perhaps you might not have expected to come up with a superior editing result. Now, what we're going to cover here today is how to do this in Sublime Text 3, but as an added bonus, Sublime Text 4 has some exciting new capabilities, and we're going to showcase one of those in a way to do something just like this in a way that's more seamless than is possible with Sublime Text 3. <music> Hey, hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Oda and Rater, and welcome to this week's video where the topic is creating template blocks of code with automatic code folding when the template is inserted. This is something that was actually asked by a viewer in the comment section of a previous video. Wanted to do something like this. Basically, you want to start off a new file or a new project with some boilerplate code, but there's parts of it that you don't necessarily need to clutter yourself up with. You want to be able to fold those away so you can focus in on the task at hand. This is a great opportunity to showcase functionalities that are built into Sublime that can be combined together to do this very thing. Now, we actually answered this user's question in a live stream, and we covered how to do this in Sublime Text 3 using only built-in functionalities. We're going to go over that today, but we also have some bonus footage here, which did appear in the live stream version of this particular question, because Sublime Text 4 has some exciting new capabilities, particularly in the realm of auto-completions, that allow us to do this very thing with a little bit of plug-in code in a much more seamless way than the method that we're going to see here. Before we get into any of that, though, question of the day. Do you use snippets in your usage of Sublime Text? And if you do, do you create them yourself or do you install packages to provide them for you? And if you don't, why not? Let me know down in the comment section below. We're going to be covering two different ways to carry out this particular action today. The first of these will work in Sublime Text 3 and Sublime Text 4, but it does require you to be familiar with key bindings, macros, and snippets in Sublime Text in order to follow along with what we're doing here. And if you're unfamiliar with any of those topics, you need a little bit of a brush up, not to worry. They're all things we've covered on the channel previously, and I've linked the videos down in the description of this video if you need to go and watch those ones before you come back so you can understand what's going on here. The second technique here is going to work in Sublime Sublime Text 4 only because it takes advantage of some new functionality in the latest builds of Sublime Text. But you also get a more seamless result. Now, if you want more information about that particular solution, which uses an event handler and an on query completions event to put things directly into the auto completion panel, there's also videos on that. And a matter of fact, an entire series on plugin and package development, plugin 101, uh, which is linked down in the description of this video as well. And uh, the user that asked this question asked it in the comment section of a video, but he actually joined in last week's Sublime Text live stream, which I do uh, right here on YouTube, and we worked through his problem there. And if you've not taken part in any of these live streams, I would urge you to check it out because we we chat, we have fun, we work on plugins, and you can ask questions and get feedback directly in real time. Now, if you're interested in that or looking at the live stream a replay uh, where we actually covered this originally, those are linked down in the description of this video as well. And while you're heading down there for any of that goodness, perhaps you might want to use the buttons below my head to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon because that way when new content becomes available on the channel you'll know about it right away now the first thing you're going to need of course is the template content that you're going to use there's a couple of different ways you could go about this you could open an existing file that you've created and use that as the basis edit it down to the stub that you would like to use or as i'm doing here you could just you know create a scratch buffer and type the stuff in that you'd like to put in there or compose it as a, a, a operation of both of those two things now as an aside i'm using a scratch buffer plugin here i'm going to be using it all throughout this demonstration if you're interested in using this thing there's a link to it down in the description of the video I've been told by people that it's kind of handy. Now, something else to note here is that my example is using C because uh, I'm a C developer. The original person who asked this question was asking it on the basis of a C++ file template. But this is programming language and really file type agnostic. Anytime that you want to have some sort of a template file text, no matter whether it's a programming uh, language or just plain text or anything in between, this will, of course, work with it. And you can use this technique. 
And once you have your template done, it's time to turn it into a snippet. So copy all of it to the clipboard and then use Tools Developer New Snippet from the menu to create a stub snippet. And you can replace the contents of this snippet with your pasted content. And you're pretty much good to go. There's a couple of things we still need to do here. One, remember that uh, there are some characters inside of the content of a snippet, for example, dollar sign characters that are special to snippets. So make sure that you quote those if you have any of them. You're also going to want to put uh, probably a dollar zero field in the location where you're going to want the cursor to go when this template expands where your work is going to start for my purposes here I'm going to put that inside of the main part of this and then we're going to drop on down here and add in some extra items now I'm going to add a tab trigger to this this isn't strictly necessary but you might want to use this as just a regular snippet as well so I'm going to add a tab trigger in here so that this will trigger I'm going to include a scope that sets this to C to make sure that uh, this will work only in this particular type of file you would change that to the scope for the file type that you are actually going to be using. And I'm also going to add in here a description tag, which isn't in the stub, but which will uh, provide more information about what this snippet is actually for. And once that's done, we save this into uh, somewhere inside of our user package using any name we like, but remember the name because you're going to need that in just a minute. We are good to go. So if I was to jump right into a scratch buffer right now, I could invoke this snippet from the command palette, or I could also just use the uh, tab completion in the uh, autocomplete panel and expand it out. And we want to make sure that this gives you the template content that you like, and it's looking good and the cursor's in the right place, but we don't have the folding going just yet. There's a couple of different ways we can fold in Sublime. One is to use the arrows that appear in the gutter, but that's not what we want to use here. We want to use the edit cold folding fold menu item or the key binding associated with it. If you're unfamiliar with what that is for your platform, look here. It's going to be faster than looking in the menu. This command will automatically fold up any text that happens to be selected. So if we were to, for example, go into our scratch buffer, select the parts of this that we would like to be folded up and then hit the key, it will fold up just like that. So the question becomes, can we make Sublime automatically select the text in the snippet that we would like it to fold? And the answer to that is yes, because when Sublime expands snippets, if that snippet has fields, it will page through the fields in numeric order, starting with one. And as it goes through each one, it'll select the text in that field so that you can actually enter the content for the thing and type over the boilerplate. So all you have to do is modify our snippet to include fields wherever you want folding to happen. So I'm going to jump back to the snippet, select all of that text and turn it into field one, just like so. And then we're really good to go on this operation. Now I'm just using one here. You could use more than one of these if you want to have multiple areas that are folded. But remember that uh, because of the way that we're going to be doing this in just a second, you want all of those fields that are going to be folded to be first and then any other fields later. And something else to note here is that the, the closing curly brace here is used to close this multi-line uh, snippet field and also in C. So I'm going to quote this one to make sure that uh, this is interpreted the way that we like. But now if we go back into the scratch buffer and expand and the snippet again, we'll see that that first field is automatically selected. We can hit the key of binding to fold it up, hit tab. We're down in the area and we're good to go on this. So the next thing to do is make Sublime do that foldy part for us so we don't have to do it manually. There's a few ways we could do this, but assuming we want to say completely in Sublime Text without having to install any third-party packages, a macro is the perfect thing for this. Now, I tend to create my macros manually. You could also create this to a large degree uh, automatically by using the recorder if you're not sure what commands to use in here, but you probably need to come back in here and add in this first command here, which is the insert snippet command, which, as its name suggests, will insert any particular snippet that you happen to give it. Make sure you provide the correct name here. This is the same as choosing the command from the command palette or automatically expanding it out from the auto completion panel. That's the first part of this operation. Remember, that's going to make the text that we want to have folded be selected. So the next thing we need to do is fold the selection and use the next field command to jump the snippet to the next field. Now, I just have one thing that needs to be folded here. If you had more than one, you would duplicate these as many times as you need. And with that, you're good to go. Remember, when you save this macro, it can be anywhere in your user package. It has to have a Sublime macro file name. Otherwise, Sublime is not going to know it's a macro. These macros will automatically appear inside of the menu if you want to do it that way. Or if you want, you can also create a key binding for this really easily, just like this. And I'm going to, of course, specify the name of the macro that we just created. And I'm going to put a context on this key binding as well, because we want to make sure that this executes only when this particular type of file is active. The run macro file command doesn't care uh, what file type it is. It just knows that it's going to execute the macro. The nice thing about this is if you do this for multiple different types of files, you can use the same key for all of them with a different 
context, one key binding will create all of your templates. And now if we go into our scratch buffer, all I have to do is hit that one key, the snippet will expand, it will fold, the cursor will jump to the right place, and we're good to go. And that is as easy as this is to do in Sublime Text 3. However, in Sublime Text 4, we can kick this one up a notch with some fancy new functionality that those builds contain. Because you might have noticed that when you use the autocomplete to expand the snippet, that's a nice, easy way to get at something like that, but it can't do the folding. And you might wonder, is it possible to create a plugin that would expand out the snippet and then do the folding? And the answer for Sublime Text 3 is no, not really. There's no way to know in the Sublime Text 3 plugin what item was chosen from the autocompletion panel. So it's not really possible there in any meaningful way. It is possible to create a key binding that would sort of approximated, but it's a, a little more involved than what we're going to be doing here. So I'm not going to cover it, but if you're interested in how to do something that, like that for Sublime Text 3, let me know down in the comment section below. And then, of course, on your way down there, use the button to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon because you're going to want to know when that video becomes available after I make it for you. Uh, but for Sublime Text 4, we can do this in a plugin because one of the things that's new about Sublime Text 4 is an enhanced API for plugins, and one of those enhancements allows us to do exactly this thing. So we're going to look at this plugin right here. And again, if you want to play with this, you can. Uh, there's a link to it down in the description. You don't need to transcribe it. Uh, the second part of this, the event listener, will only work in Sublime Text 4. You can't. It won't work in Sublime Text 3. But the command will work in Sublime Text 3 if you'd like to use that. So let's cover that first. This is an expand and fold snippet command, which takes two arguments, the name of a snippet and the number of folds that are in it. And then it will just expand that snippet and then issue the fold and next field uh, commands as many times as you told it there are folds. So if you find yourself doing that previous thing and you don't want to create a whole bunch of macros, one for each different type of thing, you could use a plugin with just this one command in it. That will work in Sublime Text 3, and it's basically replicating what that macro is doing, but in a more extensible way. The real meat of this operation, of course, is down here in this event listener. And of course, I should point out that if you're unfamiliar with how commands or event listeners work in plugins, there are videos on the channel that do that, a whole series, as a matter of fact. Plugin 101. The playlist is linked down in the description below if you'd like to know exactly how these things are working. Uh, but one of the enhancements in the Sublime Text 4 API is to the, the items we can return from on query completion. So what we can do here is tell this that what we want it to do when the completion is chosen is execute a command, in particular that one we just talked about a second ago. So we use this command completion, I completion item to say that for the completion text, the trigger text template, uh, please execute execute the command, expand and fold snippet, telling it the name of this snippet and that there's one fold in it. And then the rest of this tells this that it's a snippet, that it's a template, C program, and details for what this is actually for. And we can see what those are after we save this and jump into a file of the appropriate type, because when we open the auto-completions panel, we can see in Sublime Text 4, this is a lot fancier looking than it is in Sublime Text 3. There's this these icons along the left that tell you exactly what this is. There's an item along the bottom row that says this is an empty template for a new program. We have all the other information in here. And when you select this, it executes that command, which of course inserts the snippet, does the folding. The whole thing happens in one seamless shot. That's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found this useful and informative. If you have, use those buttons down below in my head to do the stuff. You know, I say it often enough. Remember, you can also ask questions about this or any other video down in the comment section below, and they could end up in a video just like this one. And you can also join in a live stream with the information down in the description or available on the screen right now to ask those questions live. Uh, and until the next live stream or the next video on the channel, this is Odet Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.